So the first thing I'm going to need today is my iFixit toolkit. You can see here I went for the ProTech toolkit. The reason I went for this one is because there's quite a large array of different tools that you get in this pack. Um, you can see here of course you have the different spudges, you have the tweezers. Not only that, but you also get quite a large array of different bits as well. So any screw you come across, you'll be able to make light work of it, especially with this driver as well. This is one of my favorite things about this toolkit is that this all metal driver with the swivel handle, it really does make a difference and makes light work of really anything. So the mouse I'm going to be fixing today is an old Logitech wireless mouse. It was part of a keyboard and mouse set that I had ages ago. And when I tried to use the mouse, it didn't work. And instead of me just chucking it away and let it become e-waste, I thought, let me fix it. So basically, I wanted to take it apart, just kind of get it to work again and, and maybe give it to my parents or maybe sell it. So the first thing is to locate the screws. Now, you can see that there are two feet marks at the top. It's obviously an old mouse, um, but the two screws that are at the bottom. There's only two screws on this one, which is quite good. And of course, you can see the cover there as well is, um, is kind of off already. So first of all, find the correct bit for the screw. Just pop it in there, make sure it fits. And then, of course, uh, you know, just go ahead and take out the screws. Um, just kind of be careful when you're doing these kind of things. Make sure that you put the screws into like a, you know, parts tray or something. Just make sure you don't lose them because the worst thing is uh, going back and then realizing you don't have the screws. So uh, both the screws out. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and pop it off. Now, the kind of double thing to make sure about is just to make sure that there's any clips or any um, you know, kind of extra screws because what you're going to do is you're going to be quite gentle but you're going to stick the plastic uh, prying tool into the device. Now I know that there's a couple of clips um, near the start so I know that it's, I can't just pull it out. Um, so basically what I'll do is I'll, I'll jam this um, this little kind of prying tool in there just a little bit, just to pry it open, just a tiny bit, uh, just with a little bit of force, you know, you can get it open. Now instead of me just taking the whole thing out, like I said, those clips there at the start, I just need to kind of figure out how it sits and you can see here of course now that it uh, kind of just moves out like that. So the first thing I normally do is I normally check the PCB just to see if there's any corrosion. Like I said, this mouse was basically just sat doing nothing for a long time. So sometimes there is a bit of corrosion on the PCB. Luckily, it wasn't found in the landfill site. So, you know, I can pretty much assume that there shouldn't be. It was kept in a nice clean home. It was just put in the garage. So I can kind of understand that realistically, there's not going to re really be a lot wrong with the PCB itself. But I'll just do a quick once over check just to make sure um, I can see here, of course, there's nothing really kind of wrong with it. Everything looks green. Everything looks good. Um, there's no corrosion um, on here specifically. So everything checks out. I'm just checking each of the kind of different paths and everything like that just to you know double check. Um, but I think it's safe to say the PCB is fine. So the, safe, the, the next thing is to then move on to the kind of actual other parts of the mouse. Like I said, all of these parts are okay. So then what we do is what we follow the soldering path and the wires to the battery terminals. So basically the battery terminals are one of the most uh, common kind of parts that would be uh, corroded over time just because obviously if a battery sat in there and it's kind of oxidized then maybe some of that will leak onto the actual metal contacts and also you'll see the oxidization happening. So you can see here actually that um, there are two battery connector kind of uh, parts obviously you got the front for the negative and then of course you've got the other one for the, the, uh, for the positive. Now you can see here that on this one there is a slight greening and that's where the corrosion is. That's the kind of sign that there's corrosion. So I know that doing something with this and cleaning it up will probably help and, and that's actually probably one of the problems that's happening. That's probably why it's not turning on. Maybe because the battery's sitting in there, the, uh, the battery terminal isn't making good contact with the battery and of course the uh, you know the device isn't powering on. So I'm gonna start with this one first. I'm going to basically just take it out, just kind of yank it out slowly. I can see that there is a, the cable there and then it's soldered onto different points. It's actually glued onto the inside as well, so it's a little bit tricky, but I don't wanna break it. I don't have a soldering iron. So if anything happens, if I break it, then I am back to square one and actually probably worse than that, I probably have to chuck it away. So I'm just gonna yank it out just gently just check it over once over, try not to kind of damage the cable too much, but I'm just gonna see what's going on here and if there's any more corrosion than just on the back. Or if it's on the back, 
not too much of an issue. If it's on the front, you can see here there is some on the front, but that's where potentially an issue may happen and occur. Like I said, you can see the back is quite bad. The front is, uh, is not terrible, but definitely still worth looking at. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, normally I would have uh, isopropyl alcohol or something like that that I can clean this with. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any to hand and uh, I'm going to have to go do, uh, you know, down the route of the old caveman style. And, and actually, I'm going to have to try and basically just scratch it off. Um, now, the good thing about this whole kit, I'm just going to show you really quickly. This whole kit is great. Essentially, you get this extended, um, you know, kind of flexible extender. You get, um, you know, quite a few other tools. So actually, this flexible extender is good. I'll tell you why, because if there's a kind of tight space that you need to get to it's very flexible but it's still rigid at the bottom so if there's a screw that's in a really tight hole I've got quite huge fingers and a huge hand as you can see it's actually really good you can see it's it's kind of you know like I said rigid at the bottom so um, the screw will be able to turn with it but you can get it you know get it out um, you've got all these different things you've got an ESD bracelet which I haven't used yet and you've got all the um, spudges you've got of course this glass or metal um, back plate lifter which is quite good as well so there's quite a huge range. It wasn't too expensive. I'll put a link in the video description actually for this kit because I, I do recommend it for anyone that's going to be either building PCs or kind of working with them. Um, stick around, say subscribed and keep a lookout for my videos because actually I'll be building half a new computer which is just essentially upgrading my old computer. So I'm going to show you how to put it together, test it, make sure it all works. Of course the tweezers will, will make a reappearance as some other tools in here. So coming back to it, realistically, I don't, like I said, have a soldering station. I don't have isopropyl alcohol on me. So, you know, I can still fix it, but I do need to be quite gentle. Um, you can see that obviously I'm going to be using metal on metal. I'm just going to try and scrape away some of the corrosion uh, caveman style. So I can do it. I just got to be a little bit gentle with it. You, you just got to be a bit careful because, of course, you're using metal on metal. You don't want to damage the connection too much or the connector, sorry. So you just got to be a bit gentle, be a bit careful with it. Make sure you don't damage it too much because then that will open up a whole new can of worms. You just want to take off the bit of the corrosion on the front. The back, not so much. I can't really get into it. Um, you know, I can't really clean it that well with this kind of little device here, but I think that should be okay. I'm just going to try and get some of the rest of it off um, really quickly. Like I said, normally I would do this a lot differently, but um, you know, I think this should work. All I want to do is just get this corrosion off there. I just want to make it a nice clean connection between the battery and this terminal. Um, I will check the other one in a second, but right now I just want to focus on getting this, um, you know, as clean as possible. Like I said, I'm just going to be gentle, just try and get it off as much as possible, go into the little corners and uh, yeah, make sure that I can make it work. I'm just going to get the air can and give it a quick spritz off air and, and now you can see uh, it looks pretty good. It looks a lot better than it did before. You can see there's a lot less green on the front. It looks like it's going to be a cleaner contact with the battery. Like I said, the back greenness is still there, you can see. However, I don't think it should cause much of an issue. What I'll do is I will try and uh, wait for the isopropyl alcohol to arrive and then kind of just clean it up again a bit better um, just so that it can be, you know, as new, especially if I'm going to sell it. I think realistically, I'll probably give it to my parents, but if I'm going to sell it, I do want to make it look a bit better and, uh, and then you can see I'm just going to just gently jam this back in. Don't bend it too much because obviously then you'll make the connection probably a little bit loose uh, between the battery and the terminal and you can see it looks pretty good. It looks just as new. So I did say that there was one other contact here. Um, you can see that there's two different wires connected to it so I've got to be very careful. It's kind of a little bit awkward to get out. Um, I'm just going to try and kind of jam this in the hair. <laughs> Uh, you've got to be careful. Um, again, no soldering station, so if anything goes wrong, I am not in a good shape. This one looks okay, actually. You can see here there's not that much green going on. So whatever was happening was probably just the front one. Um, so I'm just going to put this back in, just basically jam it back in there and uh, just put it back in the same place it was before, just making sure the orientation is correct as well. So. All looks good. Um, I think that should be sitting in there fine as before. Um, you know, I just want to make sure I can put it back the way that I found it, essentially. Um, so pop it back in. Uh, what we'll do is we'll now test it. I think that should be okay. PCB was fine. The battery terminals are now cleaned up. So I just need to test it and just make sure that whatever I did actually solved the issue, essentially. 
Um, like I said, the, the battery terminals are back in there. They look pretty good. Um, so I just want to put a battery in there before I close it up. And uh, like I said, just make sure whatever I did, did work. Um, you don't need to always put it back together again fully. I, you know, just clip it back in, make sure it is kind of in a good condition so you can put in the battery and it should work. So here we go, moment of truth. Let's turn it around, fingers crossed. If it's now working, what will happen is when I push that button, you'll see a red light. It may flash or it may stay a, a kind of solid red light, depending on if it's paired or not, or if it needs to be paired, but either way, the light will happen. Hey, there we go. So, all fixed. Um, what, whatever was happening must have been that battery terminal because before I didn't even get the power, um, the power light to come on. So, what's happened is you can see that it's all lit up. There's a green uh, LED on the top as well that's lighting up. I'm just going to take it off. Well, sorry, I'm going to just switch it off, take out the battery, pop the device back together again if I can it back together and then we're going to test it i'm going to put the screws back in and just retest it and make sure it is definitely completely fixed um and then of, of course off camera i'll just give it a quick um a quick go make sure it all works so like i said you know this iFixit kit the metal driver really does make a difference because you can see the magnetic part does kind of hold the screw so it makes life a lot easier trust me um i used to do these kind of things with uh, non-magnetic um kind of screwdrivers and I would lose screws all over the time and, and trust me the, the last thing you want to do is lose a screw and then get to the point where you're putting in the screws and then realize that there's one crucial one that you've left or it's on the floor and you cannot find it because these things are tiny. So one more time just want to pop the battery back in just make sure that it all looks good so I'm just going to pop the cover back on again not, not like that. Uh, there we go my big hands there we go. Um, so just want to double check make sure it's all good and yep all good. So I'm just going to test this off camera, make sure it all does work, make sure it's paired properly. You can see that there's a green light, so that's good. Um, that's pretty much done. So simple way to make sure that a mouse like this doesn't end up in the e-waste bin. And uh, like I said, maybe I'll just give it to my parents. Thanks for watching.